I'm Becca Stone with 94.9 The Rock, and I'm sitting down with Tom and Cone from Sum 41. So excited to be here. You guys are in Toronto for your hometown show. Yep. How excited are you? It's been, we're excited. It's been almost three years since we played Toronto, like a headlining show. We played Warp Tour last year, but it doesn't really count because it's like a half an hour set. But uh, yeah, I mean, we got a guest list of like 150 friends and family coming. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, we can fill a club with our guests, so <laughs> every hometown show is great, before the audience even gets there. And uh, the new album, Order and Decline, came out not that long ago, um, and, you know, we've heard that there's some political themes running through there, and it's uh, one of your heaviest albums yet. Uh, what would you guys like to tell people about the album, maybe, that you haven't already said before? Um, I think... I feel like we've said it all, but I, yeah, it is, I mean, generally, it is kind of overall the heaviest and most aggressive album we've done. Um, we've done heavy stuff in the past, like it, we did an album in 2004 called Chuck, and that was kind of like the first for, foray into like heavy music overall. And then we started just getting heavier, like um, throughout every album we've done. And uh, so, it, I mean, heavy music's not really new for us. It's just, I think overall, the whole theme of this album is just overall the heaviest. Um, it's still got a ballad, um, it's got one slow song, <laughs> there's a little break in there and then yeah. that's it. Um, but yeah, I mean there's some kind of political themes on it, there's some heavy themes, um, there's a song about Derek never meeting his father, um, so yeah, I mean it's heavy musically and I think it's heavy lyrically too. And. Um what I found really interesting about the way that you guys promoted the album is, for those who don't know, um, you guys have your pain for pleasure alter ego, and then you also called up Will Sasso again, and <laughs> yeah. he was the um, the guy who played the record producer in the beginning of uh, the Still, Still Waiting, Waiting video. Yeah. Um, and you know, you had him promote the album again, and he was telling you rock is dead, mm. and punk is in, and before that, he was trying to tell you that you know you should be the sums. Um, Getting told a lot from him <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Uh, so, like, where did that idea come from, and, and what made you guys kind of want to go back to your roots? Yeah, I think the, Derek had the idea to bring Will back, and, uh, I mean, because we, we, when we do, like, signings and stuff, we have kids coming up to the signing tables all the time and quoting that Still Waiting video all the time. So we just figured, like, let's bring him back, because he's so funny, mm -hmm. and he's, he's Canadian, and so he, he really wanted to do it again, and uh, um, he's just hilarious. Like, it's really hard to be... Because he's, he's such a seasoned actor, and we're not. So it's like, to try and keep a straight face while he's... And he's, it's all off the cuff. Like, he, he just does it off the cuff. He has some talking points, and then he just goes. And, like, we just have to kind of adapt to what he's doing. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing, like, how, how funny he is. And what's it like to put those wigs back on, be him for pleasure, <laughs> and then be critiquing some 41 in the new... Oh, well, Tom's the singer now. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we did Pain for Pleasure two years ago. After, on a European tour, I think, every night. And then it's like you're playing, you're playing in two bands every night, so we stop doing it. <laughs> Although Pain for Pleasure is only one song. Um, it's only a minute and a half long. But we put the clothes, we just started, I don't know, we brought the clothes, we didn't play, but we put them on a couple times just to goof around, and then, I don't know whose idea it was to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are doing those, um, you know, you look at your video and react, like those reaction music video videos, so we just thought it'd be funny to have us react to us. <laughs> I'll tell you, as a fan, I thought it was hilarious. Awesome. <laughs> I got a good kick out of it. Cool. Um, now, the album did just come out, and I know that, for me anyway, um, I woke up, I opened my Spotify, I hit save, all of a sudden I have this new album, and I haven't like paid for it like I obviously pay for Spotify but it's just weird because now music has shifted to streaming services so how can fans support um, their favorite artists their favorite bands now that like we're just getting the music like not for free but the biggest thing for us is the live shows um, it's nice to have millions and millions of streams or people buying songs on iTunes or whatever but I think for us if we can get like 5,000 people coming to a Toronto show that's we're happy like we don't it's not necessarily about album sales at all anymore or anything like that, um, platinum albums and all that stuff. It's, it's about like going on tour and building a fan base that way. And every time you go back to the city, if we can play to more people, that means we're still growing as a band and um, not going backwards. So it's really all about the live show for us. Yeah, you, we can't, make, really, you can't change the, the course of music format. Like It's going to change however it changed from LPs to cassettes to CDs to now streaming. Um, 
But I mean, we always just did it to play shows. We didn't ever really care about record sales, of course. That's all. That's all the executives that care about that, and the people that are selling the records. Where we just want to play to fans. So, when you sell more records, you pay to more people. So we kind of care, but it was never <laughs> a goal. Yeah. Um, and now that the, you guys have seven albums, so many singles, and then obviously so many other songs that people love, how do you put together a set list now? Uh, yeah, it's difficult, especially because this year is like Chuck's 15th anniversary, so we're going to add some more Chuck songs in. We have a new album out, so we have to play a couple new songs. But I think, you know, it's, it's, it's just show to show. Like, this one's a headlining show, so we'll play. We can play some, like, non-single songs, and I think people might know them. Um, when you play festivals, it's, it's hard, so you, just, you end up doing just singles because you're trying to appease everyone in the crowd that are not necessarily just there for your band. So I think it's just show to show, but... Um, yeah, I mean, we have so many songs to choose from now, so it's, it's actually fun because it's like, oh, we get, I haven't played that song in five years. Let's throw that one in. You have to mix it up a little yeah, bit and yeah, keep it yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, and actually, you mentioned it's Chuck's 15th anniversary. Yeah. And um, when I went back and I was doing some research, Half Hour of Power, it would be the 20th anniversary next year. Yeah. And the 20th anniversary of um, no All Killer, No Filler after that. Yeah. I know you guys went on tour to... Um, promote the 15th anniversary of Does This Look Infected. Do you guys have any any plans to do anything to celebrate those anniversaries this year or next year? Um, or rather, next year and the year after? It's hard for Chuck right now just because we're, like, ordering the client just came out. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just going to start throwing more Chuck songs into the set. Um, All Killer has been loosely talked about. It's still two years away. But uh, I think fans mm -hmm. might... Um, it, the, the thing that happened with Does Look Affected was we started getting messages on social media like it's a 20 year or 15 or what was it 20 15, 15 year anniversary um, and so we just uh, we got bombarded with all these messages so we just were like we should just go do this tour yeah. and we did the 10 year too and the same thing happened people just started messaging us and then we just figured we should go do it um, and I have a hunch it's going to be the same because the 20 year anniversary of All Killers is also going to be the 25th anniversary of the band oh. so I so. think maybe we might do it. I don't know. Okay, so I should leave like yeah. all of 2021 completely open. Is there what you're saying. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, would you guys ever consider coming back to Durham Region, playing a show there? I know you haven't <laughs> been there in a while. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, we grew up in Ajax, so um, I don't know. I guess this would probably be bigger than mm -hmm. it is here, um, which would be scary. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, Oshawa, Pickering, Ajax, I mean, wherever, yeah. And. Uh, there's a possibility that some younger kids now, you know, there could be some 13-year-old kid who's hearing Sum 41 for the first time. You know, you hear uh, Out for Blood on the radio, and then you go, you listen to the new album, and now they have become a huge Sum 41 fan. So what are your recommendations for the next album that they should listen to if they are just getting into the band right now? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't know. I guess maybe it does look, does look infected, maybe. All killer. I mean, like we some play a lot of stuff. Look infected, so yeah. I think that would be a good one. But I mean, I like I like them all for different reasons. But screaming, I still like that. Like, a lot. <laughs> yeah. We don't play a lot of it. We play like one or two songs yeah. once in a while. Yeah, it's stuff. I yeah, I mean, go back to some of the old stuff. I would yeah. think. Yeah. All right. That's all my questions for you guys. Uh, is there anything else that you want to add on or say? Uh, no. I mean, the record's out. Um, came out on the 19th, so we're going to be on tour for the next two years. So we'll, we'll be back. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. All right.